So take a look at these three examples. In the first one, would we be allowed to multiply this 2 and this 4 together? Of course we can. And that would give us negative 8, right? Well, the negative over there, so that would give us negative 8. Why can we put them together? Because of the fact that there are no exponents involved with those numbers. So then could we multiply this 2 and this 3 together? No, because now there are exponents involved. So when there are exponents involved, you can only put like terms or like bases together. So you could combine this 2 and this 2 together, but it wouldn't become a 4. It would stay a 2, and then you would add the exponents together. So as soon as exponents become involved, things become a little more complicated. So if we had to look at this third one, you would not be able to multiply the 45 and the 9. Why so? because there are exponents involved and those bases are not the same. However, when we looked at this first one, the 2 and the 4 can definitely go together because there aren't any exponents there. The exponents are only on the x's and the y's. Okay, so I hope you can see that big difference. Now, with this second example, it was easy to know that this 2 and this 2 will go together, and then these 3's would go together. So when the bases are the same, you can combine them. But there's something that's very important about this 2 and this 3. Those are already prime numbers, okay? So they can't be dropped any further. But what if we look at this one over here? These numbers can still be made smaller. And that's the new type of question we're going to look at now. And it's, it's, a, it's, complete, it's new to grade 10. So what we can do, for example, if we had to look at the number 45 and we had to look at the number 9, at the moment, they don't seem to have anything in common. But what if we break them down as far as they can possibly be broken? Well, to do that, you do the following. If you had to take the number 45, I want you to think of any two numbers that you can multiply together to give you 45. Now, some people might say 15 times 3. So let's do that. Other people might say 9 times 5. Now, what I want you to do is to keep having a look at these numbers and break each number down as far as it can. Well, 3 can't be broken down any further. I mean, it is the same as 3 times 1, but that's already the same thing. 15 is the same as 5 times 3. And then I'm just going to add this times 3 over here. And then that 3 and that 3 can be the same as 3 to the power of 2. And so 45 is the same as 5 times by 3 to the power of 2. Let's look at this example here. So 9 can still be broken down as 3 times 3, and then this 5 is already as broken down as possible. And so then once again, the 3 and the 3 will give us 3 squared times 5. And so we get the same answer no matter what. And so what we have to do in these questions is break the numbers down as far as you possibly can until you can't break the numbers down anymore. These numbers that you get at the end are called prime numbers. They are the building blocks of all numbers. Now, if you have a Casio calculator, it can do this for you. What you do is you type in 45 on your calculator. You then type the equal sign. You then say shift. And then you look for a button that's slightly towards the left of the calculator and about three rows down. And it's, there's a word called fact. If you push that button, it will automatically do this for you. And so I've been talking about this for quite some time. So let's actually see what we are trying to get to. So what you have to do is to be able to combine some of these numbers. And so remember, we said that 45 is then going to be 3 squared times by 5. We said we were also going to look at the 9. Well, we know that 9 is the same as 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. And so in fact, 45 and 9 do have a few things in common. They've got the 3 and the 3. And so... Let's see how this is all going to come together now in this next, in this example that we're going to do here. So at the moment, these numbers don't really have anything in common. I mean, this 9 is the same as that 9. But further than that, we can't really do anything. Because remember, to be able to combine the exponents, you need the basis to be the same. So what we do is we take each number. So we'll start with the 45. And we're going to break that down as far as possible. And we've already seen that that's the same as 3 squared times 5. So then we're going to put a bracket and put the exponents x plus 1 because that's the exponents that it originally had. We're then going to do the 9 which is going to be 3 squared in a bracket and then we say x minus 2. Then at the bottom we're going to break that 9 up into 3 squared in a bracket and then you have 2x and then this 5 is already broken down. You can't break 5 down anymore and so that will stay like that. The next step is going to be to do the simple exponent rules. 
And so we look at this two over here, and what do we do with that two and that x plus one? Think about your exponent rules, you multiply. And so that's gonna become three to the power of two x plus two. And then the five we're gonna do as well. Why am I doing the three and the five? Well, what would you have done here? If we had a squared times b to the power of three, you would have done the two and the three, and then you would have done the one and the three for the b. Okay, so this five currently has a one over there, and so we multiply, and so that's gonna become five to the power of x plus one. I'm now gonna do this part here where we multiply, so that's gonna be three to the power of two x minus four. Moving to the bottom, we're gonna multiply over there, and so we get three to the power of four x, and then five x. So have a look what we've done. We've gone from an expression like this where there wasn't much in common to having only threes and fives. And now that means we can combine. So we can combine all the threes together and we can combine all the fives together. So at the top, let's combine those threes. So what does the exponent rule say? If you had a three times by a to the power of two, what would you do with these? You would add them. And so we do the same over here. And so that's gonna be two x plus two plus two x minus four. So I've just added these together. And then at the top, we still have the five to the x plus one. And at the bottom, we can't do anything there because the bases aren't the same. Okay, now we can combine vertically, right? Because now we have a three at the top and a three at the bottom. But first, I just wanna simplify this part over here. So two x plus two x is four x, and plus two minus four is minus two. So that's gonna be four x minus two. And so what does the exponent rule say? What would you do if you had a7 over a4? Well, you would subtract. And so we're gonna subtract. And so it's gonna be three to the power of four x minus two minus four x at the top. And then the fives, it's gonna be five to the power of x plus one minus x. You see, I took this one and I minused that over there. And then you just simplify. So the four x's will cancel over here. So we're left with three to the minus two. And then these x's are gonna cancel and we're gonna be left with five. Now remember, we're not allowed to leave our answer with negative exponents. And so this part has to go to the bottom like that. And then we know that three to the power of two is nine. And so the final answer is five over nine.